The following video is a walkthrough of how to create an alignment using Create Alignment by Layout in Civil 3D. The video will also show how to adjust that alignment, lengthen or shorten the alignment. To begin, open a new drawing. In the Prospector tab of the tool space, scroll down to the Data Shortcuts section. Right-click Data Shortcut and click Set Working Folder. Navigate to the Project Folder. For this example, we are using the same project folder that was used for the last video, Stream Design, DEM Create Existing Ground. Bring in the existing ground surface by expanding the surfaces dialog and finding the existing ground surface. Right click the surface name, then click Create Reference. Here you can change the name or the display style of the surface. Click OK. In the command line, type ZE to zoom to the extents of the drawing. To see aerial imagery in the background, set the project coordinate system for the drawing. To set the project coordinate system, click the Settings tab in the tool space. Right click the drawing name. In this case, it is Drawing 1. Select Edit Drawing Settings. Navigate to the appropriate coordinate system. Click OK. This brings up the Geolocation tab in the ribbon towards the top of the drawing. Click Geolocation in the ribbon. Click the drop down in the ribbon that says Map Off. Select Map Aerial. This will bring up an aerial background to work from. Zoom into where the alignment is going to start. Typically, we start the alignment at the upstream end of the reach and work going downstream. To bring up the menu bar at the top of Civil 3D to ease navigation, type menu bar into the command line. Change the value from 0 to 1 and press Enter. You will notice a menu bar at the top of the ribbon. To create an alignment by layout, click Alignment in the menu bar. Click Create Alignment by Layout. Give the new alignment a name and select an alignment style and alignment label set. Click OK. This will bring up the Alignment Layout Tools window. Click the drop down next to the first button and select Tangent Tangent with Curves. Click to start the alignment. This alignment will be the center line of the bankful channel. Continue to draw the alignment by clicking along the intended path of the channel. Every click will mark a point of intersection between the two tangent sections. Do not spend a lot of time trying to make the alignment correct at this point in the process. It is easier to adjust and correct the alignment after it is initially drawn. After the alignment is complete, go back through and make sure that none of the curves are too tight. If the curves are too tight, the offset alignments for the bankful lines, shown in the next step, will not be created. Often stream design is an iterative process. For the most part, our design alignments use the tangent sections to represent riffles while using the curves to represent pools. Create offset alignments to represent the bankful lines. Click on the center line alignment in the ribbon. Click on the offset alignment button. Set the offset distance. In this case, the bankful width is going to be 20 feet. An offset of 10 feet on both the left and right sides. Select the alignment style and label set. Click OK. To make it easier to dial the alignment in, add labels showing the radius of curvatures along with line and curve lengths. With an alignment selected, click Add Labels in the ribbon. Select Add Alignment Labels. From the Label Type drop-down, select Multiple Segment. Choose the curve and line label styles. Click Add. Now select the alignments that need labels. In this case, select both bankful alignments. Once labeling is completed, click Close to close the dialog window. Now start making finer adjustments to the alignment to ensure that the alignment meets design parameters. When an additional curve is needed, click on the alignment. In the alignment ribbon, select Geometry Editor. Click the Add PI icon, the second icon from the left. Then click the point where the point of intersection goes on the alignment. Now click the drop down next to the curve in the Alignment Layout Tools window. It is the 6 icon from the left. From the drop down, select Free Curve Fillet between two entities radius. With the Select tool, select the upstream tangent section, then select the downstream tangent section. Select less than 180, then type in the radius of curvature of the newly formed curve. Labels can be added to single segments of the alignment similarly to adding them to multiple segments. If you add multiple segment labels multiple times, you will have repeat labels. If the alignment needs to be extended, you can pull the end of the alignment to the end of the location and add curves as shown previously. It is also possible to extend the alignment by clicking the drop-down next to the first icon in the Alignment Layout tool window 
and selecting Tangent Tangent with Curves, as the alignment was originally drawn with, then clicking on the end of the alignment, using the final point as the point of intersection for the next curve and continuing downstream with drawing the alignment. If the previous steps are followed, but the end of the alignment was not clicked, it is important to combine the two square handles as shown. This will allow the alignment to act appropriately. Save the file by typing Ctrl S and navigating to the location the file is to be saved to. Name the file, then click Save. To create data shortcuts to the new alignment, right-click Data Shortcuts and the Prospector tab of the tool space. Select Create Data Shortcuts. Select the boxes for the shortcuts that are to be created. Click OK. To look at geometry data for the alignment, click the alignment from the ribbon, open the Geometry Editor, click the icon with the green circle and pencil on it. This will bring up a dialog box with the geometry information in it. From here, the radius of curvatures or their chord lengths can be adjusted. Information from this table can also be copied into the clipboard and pasted into a program such as Excel. The following few seconds briefly demonstrate the grip handles that are found on an alignment. It shows the handles we commonly use to adjust alignments. You will notice square handles, circular handles, and triangular handles. Using the square handle in the middle of the tangent section, you can adjust the location of the tangent section. Using the circular handles marking the ends of the curves, you can adjust the curve's radius. The vertical pointing triangle can be used to move the curve. This will impact the arc length of the curve. The circular handle in the middle of the curve can also be used to adjust the radius of the curve. The triangle grip that is not vertical can be used to adjust the radius or move the curve. I don't often use this handle to adjust the alignment. The following is a tool we commonly use to measure the pool-to-pool -pool spacing. Start by creating a circle by typing CI in the command line. Click a place on the drawing for the center of the circle. Type D and press Enter to draw a circle with a specific diameter. This first circle will have the low end of the pool-to-pool -pool spacing as the diameter of the circle. For the second circle, type CI into the command line. Type Center, click the center of the first circle. Now type D for diameter and specify the diameter of the next circle. This diameter should relate to the maximal pool-to-pool -pool spacing. Type LA into the command line. Create a new layer to put the measurement tool on. Select both circles and put them on the new layer. Type block into the command line to create a block with your measuring tools. Give the blocks a name. Make sure the checkbox is selected next to specify on screen. Click OK. Type center. Select the center of the circles. Use the new block to ensure that the alignment falls within the parameters. Continue to adjust the alignment until it meets all the design objectives. If you find our video informative or would like to see more videos relating to stream design, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.